I'm always excited whenever I run across a new turn-based style RPG. Maybe it's the nostalgia or the ability to strategize my next move perfectly that piques my interest. I received For the King from the developers what feels like forever ago, and now it has finally released on Steam as of April 19th, 2018. Designed by Colby Young, Iron Oak Games seeks to meld tabletop, RPG, and roguelike elements together as you find you and your friends adventure across a vast world to explore. Let's push back the tide of darkness and adventure forward in this review of For the King. For the King doesn't weigh you down with story and heavy exposition like you'd expect with most RPG titles. Instead, it goes for a more tabletop approach, with giving you objectives and lore as you explore the world and complete tasks. A coming chaos is on the horizon. The King of Faroul has been slain, and the grieving Queen Rosamond has tasked citizens to find the Kingslayer and put an end to the chaos energy consuming the land. The story feels very bare bones and lacking any real depth. It's more of an excuse and plot device to keep the players moving. The game does come with an encyclopedia to explain lore, but it's mostly used to explain game mechanics. I felt very disappointed in the lack of story, to say the least. It's hard not to look at For the King and go, huh, RuneScape sure has changed. The visual aesthetics of the characters and enemies feels like a larger adaptation of RuneScape's models, just kind of more detailed. This seems to have allowed for each piece of armor and weapons to have unique visual designs on the character models, something I wasn't expecting when first starting off. The world map works really well with this art style as it feels like I'm looking over top a massive board game. The music isn't particularly memorable, feeling very generic at times. Sound effects can have some pretty weighty punch to them when smashing enemies to pieces. Some of the lutes have pretty charming guitar riffs, but others sound like a banjo being dropped on the ground. The UI was recently improved upon release, and it offers a plethora of information for those to get every bit of min-maxing out of their characters. The frame rate for me never dipped below 144 FPS, although I did end up locking the FPS down to 60 via Nvidia Inspector for the sake of recording. I also found myself turning off depth of field, tilt shift, and motion blur, as I found the blurring effect to be nauseating after a while. The game is a bit of a mixed bag in terms of presentation. Visually, it looks just like a board game, but sound and music-wise, there is much to be desired. At the start of a new game, you can choose to play online, local co-op, or a solo adventure, as well as one of three difficulties. You have a choice of the main adventure, a dungeon crawl where you need to destroy five chaos generators in separate dungeons, and frost adventure where winter has come forever. You create three characters for your adventure, selecting their names, cosmetics, and classes. Once in-game, you're presented with your first task, Find Hildebrandt, and it's at this point, it's up to the player how they go about this. On the world map, there's towns for you to use for resting up and buying items to help you on your quest. The movement is on a hex-based grid, and enemies will spawn and despawn as turns go by. Each turn progresses the timer on the top of the screen, bringing you closer to events such as chaos energy buffing the enemies, or simply having the time of day change. As you explore, you'll see hidden items and locations to gather and delve into. The game heavily rewards exploration, allowing you to earn extremely rare and valuable loot the further you go off the beaten path. Each one of your heroes has their own unique experience bar, and to make sure they level together, you must keep each unit close to one another in order to engage enemies as a party. This mechanic means that even if you play multiplayer, you'll feel forced to stick close together, limiting your options heavily. It's inadvisable to solo monsters, and once you hit a harder difficulty, you'd be asking for death if you engage as one person. We make the tank OP, so we don't have to do anything. <laughs> He'll solo the dungeon for us. I found there was no advantage to playing co-op as you simply do everything your way in a solo adventure. Sure, I was having fun with my friends, but most things are more fun with friends. Loot determines character abilities, and the class determines what weapons they should use. 
Since each of the weapons and armor has preset damage values and abilities, it makes it easier to determine a flat upgrade. It's extremely rewarding to find high-end loot off monsters, dungeons, and random interactable objects. the forester then you could use it. A lot of the time, you'll need to perform skill checks, not unlike Dungeons and Dragons or CRPGs. Use the best character for the job, and you have a great chance of success in obtaining loot, gold, or avoiding traps and enemies. The only thing I would have liked to see is the ability to have your characters assist you in these checks, as the game already asks you to stick close together for encounters. Combat takes you into a turn-based battle system, where you fight up to three foes at a time. Turns are displayed Final Fantasy X style, so you know exactly who goes next. You can adjust action times by casting haste on allies or slowing down enemies with stuns. Each action is determined by a skill check, so the less skill checks you need to make and the higher your skill with that weapon means greater chances of success. This system is tried and tested, and it feels great to play. The major flaw here is the character abilities are in fact limited by their currently equipped weapon. They don't gain permanent skills outside of their starting traits. This means that you're always limited in what you bring to the battle, which can make the combat feel too simplistic and straightforward. Where games like Darkest Dungeon excel at this, as you can choose any abilities you want, on top of having weapon damage being a separate entity, For the King lacks even that depth when players are tied down to a weapon that may have high damage but poor skills, or vice versa. But lastly, as this game is a roguelite, there are ways to improve your chances of survival on subsequent playthroughs. As you complete objectives, clear dungeons, and collect loot. You'll earn lore pages. You obtain more or less depending on the difficulty you're on. These lore pages allow you to purchase new classes to play, unique locations to use, as well as item drops and cosmetics. This grind does feel pretty hefty, as many of the items request a ton of lore to unlock. Given that the world map is randomly generated, it can mean for a ton of replayability with new strategies and classes to explore thanks to this lore system. It's a simple system, but it encourages players to keep trying, as even in failure, there is some success in the form of lore unlocks. God, that sword is 16 damage with lunge. The world of For the Kings is fun to explore, and the combat can be quite satisfying. I love the ability to min-max my characters. The customization and unique loot that has distinct visuals is fantastic. It really felt like I was playing a board game that would change each time I would start a new game. The lore pages are a nice touch to keep things fresh on subsequent playthroughs. The three adventure modes also make for some nice variety as well. However, the multiplayer felt lacking due to how players feel restricted by character placement. The story is bare bones at best, and I can't help but dislike that monsters one level higher than me feel almost untouchable. If you're looking for a board game style co-op experience, then For the King may be exactly what you're looking for. But for those seeking deep character skills and abilities, they may find it lacking. For the King gets a three out of five. Thank you for watching my review. For the King is available now on Steam, and I have left a link in the description if you are interested in checking it out. Once again, the review code was given to me by the developer. If you have any recommendations on some turn-based RPGs or board game inspired titles, please let me know in the comments below. I, for one, am a big fan of our mellow and darkest dungeon. Anywho, that's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.